I'll take my fish out of the sous vide machine and the salmon is cooked perfectly. Go, Lee. Oh, it's drained my sauce. It's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it tastes, so my sauce is ready to go. Go, Lee. I've learned from yesterday's cook that I need to tie a dish to get it. So in the pantry, I've seen some really fresh tomatoes. They look great. Just prepping some tomatoes that I'm going to roast in the oven to get some nice sweetness from them. They should be sweet and juicy and full of flavour. And I'm hopefully it will tie it all together. Go, Lee. Feeling the pressure? If you're not, there's something wrong with you. Five minutes to go. I grab it out of the blast chiller, and it's not ice cream. No. Now I'm thinking this isn't going to work. Far out. How many times have I made ice cream? I could easily throw my hands in the air and go, oh, that's it. But that's not me. I have to do something here or I'm going to be the one going home. OK, it might change to... Um... <laughs> Custard. I need a little jug. Oh, she has called it a custard now. Is it called a custard? She She's said? called it a custard. Good. The custard, yeah, is a pretty poor replacement for the ice cream, really. It's going to be Earl Grey custard. <laughs> because I have the shortbread biscuits to make an ice cream sandwich, and custard's completely different. I'm sort of resigning myself that I'm going home. Good, ben. Looks good, Ben. It looks really good. With a couple of minutes to go, I taste the candied walnuts in the ice cream and the date puree's got a beautiful acidity. The flavours are there. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Normally, Gatumari is served in an alfoil wrap, thrown down on the table, but this is MasterChef. I can't serve Gary, Matt and George pastry wrapped in foil. I have to serve it in a modern way. But I don't know how I'm going to plate these up. Make it look delicious. I start tearing up the pastry and arranging it on a plate. It's such a risk because there's no backup. And then I realise that's just not how Gatto Muddy is served. It's got to come in a clump. Look at that. This is it. Final few touches. Three minutes to go. My plating looks like an absolute mess. I can't believe it. What have I done? Lee, what have you cooked? So I've done coffee salmon and a aniseed beurre blanc. I'm pretty confident with the flavours of aniseed and, and the salmon. I think um, there's a lot of it in there, so hopefully it all goes well together. That, it's just so beautiful. Nice. Nice. I think we all felt that yesterday was a bit of an aberration for yeah. me, and that reminds us of the dish that they put up in auditions. Yeah. And, and it's great. And, you know, the hardest thing for anyone here to do is start finding your voice. And if this is Lee's voice, it's like a mm. classically trained opera singer. That is a beautiful, beautiful plate of food. It does exactly what you want it to do. Power of that sauce, like it's crustacean -y, it's fishy, tons and tons of flavour. Once you explode that tomato, <laughs> you've got this more intricate, interesting, yummy flavour. Mm. And you know what, the challenge was the salmon and aniseed and that combination is all across this dish of wonderful food.
There's no doubt about it in terms of the food that you put up today. I can smell walnut and date, which is fantastic. I just look at that and it honestly looks like a train wreck. What is the dish? Gatumari, with baklava ice cream and a date puree. You denatured that beautiful was beautiful when you put it in the foil because yes. what happens is it steams back into itself. Yes, and it's out. generally served in the foil. Hello. <laughs> there, there, there's your first plating lesson. And you I know? was going to. You, you, got, you got to understand that food is not designed to be photographed and put into cookbooks and magazines. It's designed to be eaten. It's designed to hit the table and for, for you to share exactly that memory. And George is the master of it, you know? Yes. And if there's a lesson you can learn, if you get through today, is don't, don't mess with it so much. You don't need to. I hope it tastes good. Yeah, yeah okay. Thanks, Benjamin. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Benjamin. Um, I'm gonna put it out. It, it smells really beautiful, but it looks like an absolute train wreck. <laughs> Yeah, but, the, but the smell, the job at hand was to blend uh, dates and walnuts. Yeah. And you, you can mm. smell that totally. along with other spices. Totally. Tell you what, it may look like a dog's breakfast, but if I can swear, just ever so, you know, briefly, bloody hell, <laughs> that ice cream, mm. that walnut sort of praline crunchy ice cream and the date mm. puree is just absolutely gold. That's delicious. Like, really is delicious. He really nailed the brief in terms of walnut and date. Really beautiful way that he was pulling the dough out. It's a bit like a strudel dough. You, yeah. you keep teasing it out. Um, and he, he did a fantastic job. Yeah. You know, you can tell it's obviously, you know, he's learnt it from his grandmother and it's yeah. beautiful to see that old way of pulling dough yeah. out. This is still alive and kicking. It's a really, really, really delicious dish. And, you know, I can forgive Rustic if it's that darn yeah. delicious. Yeah, if it's yeah. that good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Rashidal, what have you cooked? Mango, mint, pepper, consorbe, coconut pot stickers, a coconut broth, and some charred mangoes. How was that? That was nerve wracking, exciting. Really tested me out today. Yeah. You picked the mango and obviously got green peppercorn. What does it mean so much to you? I wanted to give certain flavors that we have uh, back in Bangladesh. So my mom used to make fantastic little delicate pitas, and that was one of my favorite dishes growing up. So I just wanted to have a modern take on it. I think that's a beautiful I think food. Really I mean, good. it's all about his family, where he's come from, who he is, and, and I think it looks really modern and beautiful. Well, I, think, I love that idea that he's brought kind of a, a bit of his Bangladeshi past and heritage and childhood and paired it with a kind of a, a very sort of modern Southeast Asian approach to dessert. So I think that's great to see. It's a very different way of approaching food and love it. Interesting. <clears throat> I, I can't get any peppercorn. No. I'm no. trying to find it. Like, give me some. And I thought it would have been so clever putting something that's peppery, like that green peppercorn, yeah. with something cold like a sorbet. Mm. What have you cooked? Grilled peaches, shortbread biscuits, 
coconut crumble and an earl grey custard. What do you think, boys? If she survives today, I think the key for her is just to discover her mojo and, and understand that three ingredients on that plate can be absolutely delicious. And peaches look beautiful. I mean, you know, they're, they're nice and bright and fresh and it's a little old fashioned, but could taste yum. I think she just she got frazzled, phased, didn't know how to plate it up. But I think the components of it, you know, the, the infusion of the Earl Grey tea, I was a bit worried that it was going to be, you know, too steeped and too strong. But actually, it's balanced well with the sugar. There's a touch of orange in there. Biscuit's beautiful. Peach is beautiful and fresh and perfectly cooked. And I don't mind that kind of toasty, sweet coconut either. I mean, it all makes sense to It's me. surprising. It's like a really good milky cup of like Shearer's tea, <laughs> and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a country <laughs> shortbread to dunk, and then you get that lovely um, freshness of the peach, and the, 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 the texture of that is a wonderful contrast. Yeah. Benita Rashadel, this challenge was all about pairing two ingredients beautifully. Benita, yours was peaches and Earl Grey tea. Rashadel, mango and green peppercorn. Rashadel. You heroed the mango. However, we were left searching for the flavor of green peppercorn, and that's why, Rashadel, we're sorry, you're going home. Thanks, Benita. Oh, Rashadel, the first elimination's always the toughest, but, uh, and we're really sad to see you go so soon. Well, the, the three of us wanted to get to know you more because there's an incredible spirit within yourself that the three of us can connect to. Um, you're a great cook, mate. Don't ever doubt that. Don't let it end here. I mean, as you walk out those doors there, you need to follow your dreams. Go for it, yeah, because you can do it. Thanks for all your advice during the cooking and uh, all the learnings I've had from each one of them. So, yeah, thanks it's a for pleasure, Rashida. No problem, mate. Thank, <laughs> thank you, guys. Best of luck. Thanks, thanks John. Well all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Rash. Thanks. 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 All right, guys. Thanks. Come on. Okay. Thanks, guys.